Welcome to another masterclass. My name is Alex Mondosian, and today it's all about networking tips. That's your business network to get qualified referred prospects. Now, the key words there are qualified, which really means pre qualified, and referred, which means that they have no acquisition cost. Now, the people who are referring them, they may have had a customer acquisition cost, which usually is the single biggest marketing cost that there is. That's the cost of acquisition of a client. But if they're referring, then you can amortize their acquisition cost over the lineage of people they're referring. And all of a sudden, you've gone to heaven without the inconvenience of dying as it relates to marketing. So let's start with the definition. What, what is the definition of a referral? Well, a referral comes from someone who trusts you whether or not they do business with you. Now, many times you don't have to have someone who's purchased from you to give you a, a referral. They could be in a mastermind that you're in. They could be an endorser of yours. Maybe they have no need for your product or service, but they're referring to you because they trust that you will take care of the person they're referring. It's about status. It's about them not looking bad. It's about your fulfillment ability. Many times people look great in public and they have great promotion, but their fulfillment ab ability, their ability to follow through doesn't always match their ability to promote. It's nice when you have both. All right, so why are referrals so critical to profits? And the key, words, the key word is profits. Now, you probably know referrals and profits are not the same thing. Ref the, the referral that comes in can turn into revenue, and revenue is the money that's coming in. That's your gross sales. That's the money that's coming in as a result of the sale, but then there are all these other expenses, and then the profit is what's left over. Without revenue, you don't have profits. And without profits, you don't get to grow your business because by sinking some of the profits back into your business, you get to grow and scale that business. And whether you're a startup doing less than $100,000 or if you're doing $10 million, profit is important. And through my experience, it's harder to make profits grow as you get bigger because the business becomes more and more complex. So one of the easiest ways to offset that is getting a referral stream of people, which most people don't really focus on. They focus on getting cold prospects. They focus on doing launches or stage presentations, but they don't really have a referral division. And let me be clear, if you had someone on your team where part of their job was referral manager, where they would elicit referrals, where they would ask for referrals, where they would create, create and facilitate more referrals coming in to your business, where it was easy for people to refer. You gave them, let's say, a template or a script of what to say and how to say it. Referrals are the ultimate way to build a business and have true growth without having a customer acquisition cost. All right. So, um, how are referrals defined by segment? All right, well, um, I was taught by a mentor of mine. His name is Fred Reichelt, and he wrote a book called The Ultimate Question. And The Ultimate Question, I think, is over 300 pages, if I remember. It's in my library, just over my shoulder. But there's just a few pages that you need to know in order to understand that there are really three segments of people who are referring to you or are potential reference. Those are the people referring people to you that you want to pay attention to. So the three referral segments are, and if you haven't heard of these, just pay attention and, and take down some notes. Wherever you are, if you're listening, if you're reading, or if you're watching, the first group is a promoter. Now a promoter is someone who upon asking them a question and assuming they're a customer of yours, right? And people do this in the Fortune 500 business um, 
arena, such as Enterprise Rent-A-Car, Dell Computer, uh, Costco, AT&T, you'll get this question. It's called the ultimate question. It's one question followed by a second one that refines it even more. And it was developed by Fred Reichel. Just look up the book, The Ultimate Question. It's worth getting the book, at least in Kindle version. So when you ask the ultimate question, and I will teach you what that is, and it's a very specific question. If you get a score of a nine or a 10, that's an A, right? A, a nine is 90% out of 10. And that's an A minus, a 10 is an A plus. A passive is getting a seven or an eight. A seven is a C, a, an eight is a B minus. And then a detractor is getting a zero to six score. I'm very happy I've never gotten a zero, but I've had some detractors. Now, detractors actually detract business away from you. So if you're wanting to create a referent, a person who's gonna create referrals for you, because that's what your network is about, is teaching your own buyers on how to give you more referrals, the detractor will actually tell people not to go to you. If let's say you're a dentist and you had a bad experience with a patient, you made their gums bleed or you weren't very good with the, with the needle and um, the, um, uh, instead of numbing their gums, you made their gums bleed. Well, you're going to get people to tell others never to see you again. Or if you, you own a restaurant and there was food poisoning involved, then that person probably will be a detractor if you ever ask them the question. Now the promoter, the promoter will actually promote your business. They gave you a nine or a 10 and the passive, well, believe it or not, the passive really has very little energy. So many people think passives are second to promoters, but they're not. The goal is to have promoters and then to turn your detractors into your promoters. And there's a very special way to do it. Here's the ultimate question. How likely is it that you would refer a friend or colleague to this business on a scale of zero to 10? Once again, how likely is it? It's a closed, well, it's a multiple, co multiple choice question, right? On a scale of one to 10, how likely is it that you would refer a colleague or friend to this business? Now I'm saying this business, but you would fill in as a template what it is that you do. So for example, if it's uh, Gorilla Business Online, which is one of our mentoring programs, well, now that you've been in for a month, how likely is it that you would refer a friend or a colleague to Gorilla Business Online? or Acme Financial Services. On a scale of zero to 10, how likely is it that you would refer a colleague or friend to Acme Financial Services? Or let's say it's Acme Baby Products. I'm using Acme as a catch-all term, just so you know, it's a template. On a scale of zero to 10, how likely is it that you would refer your colleagues and friends to Acme Baby Products? Now, if you get the answer, as a nine or a 10, then that goes into one segment, that's a promoter. If you get a seven or eight, that's a passive. And if it's a zero to six, that's a detractor. And it's important to ask a second question. Now, if you get a promoter, the first thing we ask them is, all right, what would you say to them specifically? Now, why is that such an important question? Because you're going to extract their sales pitch. And I guarantee you the reference that you're going after to get referrals don't really know the sales pitch because they're new. They're, they don't have a sense of literacy how to refer to you. So you have to teach them. They don't have a sense of fluency, which is close to mastery of referring to you. So you got to teach them. And this is where you're creating a network of reference referring to you so that you lower your customer acquisition cost. When is the last time you saw an Amazon ad? Can you remember? When's the last time that you were promoted to buy on Amazon? Or what about eBay? Probably not recently. You just know to go there and you buy it. Why? Because they focus on the network of referral, uh, 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 referral uh, prospecting. And they know that once someone buys, then they get you into the Amazon, Amazon Prime program. Same with eBay. Um, if you go to eBay and you purchase there, that's typically a habit and you go there and you buy. If you're a seller on eBay, then you're, 
you know, hopefully that you're getting their highest ratings and then you keep selling and selling and selling. So if you get a nine or a 10, then their next question is, okay, what specifically would you tell them, you know, to refer them to our business? And then if they give you something that doesn't, doesn't sound very um, persuasive or influential, then you say, are you open to feedback? Um, could, would you be open to saying this? And then through a very brief conversation, you're actually infusing a sales pitch where they can at least remember the next time that you come up and you'll have top of mind awareness in the future. Now, will it last very long? Not necessarily, but isn't this more than what you're doing right now? Now, for a passive, you ask them, and the passives don't have energy. The promoters and the detractors have energy, right? Promoters have positive energy, detractors have negative energy. So for the passive, the question is, well, what would make it a 10? You gave a, a seven or eight, but what would have made it a 10? Sometimes they don't even know. Other times they'll tell you, and then that's a survey question. So that can go to your customer service um, division if you have one, or it could go and revise some sales copy or a video script or audio script that you have or a blog post. And then for a detractor, you ask them, well, what's the reason or reasons behind your score? So you don't overturn or attempt to overturn a detractor right there because they're upset. So you say, what's the reason or reasons behind your score? And sometimes I say, is there more? And now I'm getting feedback on why I got a D or an F. Now, it doesn't happen often, but when it happens, I want to find out why, and I don't attempt to sell them because they're upset. But I, at least I'm getting that information back. There is nothing like a detractor who converts to a promoter. Because a detractor who converts to a promoter, and I've had several, they are promoters for life because they've gone from super unhappy and detracting and sending business away. Again, a lot of energy. The opposite side of that sword, it's a two-bladed sword, is the promoter, and they will promote you again and again. All right. So let's look at a three-step formula to attract more social influencers. I've taught this formula for many, many years. I know very few people who utilize it to the full extent of its potential, but it's called the FIT formula. Now, I want you to track with me here because the FIT formula is very specific because F-I-T stands for follow, invite, and tell. FIT stands for follow, invite, and tell. So step one is for you to follow a social influencer in your area of expertise, someone who has more status than you do, and you follow them in their, on their platform of choice. So if their platform is LinkedIn, then you follow them there. Typically, it'll be Facebook, but not always. If they're on Facebook, you follow them there. I know a lot of politicians on Twitter, you would follow them there. And what do you do? Every single day, I, I would do it five days a week. If you could do it seven days a week, but for at least 90 days. Now, it could have taken you nine years to get to meet these people, but in less than 90 days, if you showed up and your face popped up again and again and again, and you were genuinely and authentically edifying them, saying good things about their posts, or maybe challenging them, but not being controversial or being argumentative, but actually adding value so that you act as a host and not as a participant on that platform. There's a big difference. When I do my one day to greatness events with uh, Jack Canfield, it's a one day event. I'm there as the, I call myself the energy manager, but I'm really the MC. And I'm there to raise the energy of the group so that when Jack comes on, um, he has more enthusiastic you know, people in the audience. There's usually over 600 people in the audience. And then when it comes time to enroll them into a training or into buying books or, or vision boards and whatever it is that he's offering, they're more likely to say yes. But if I were to follow Jack Canfield, who's a good friend of mine, so you know, I've been following him and he's been following me for years. But if I followed him for 90 days and I kept showing up and my face showed up, let's say on his Facebook fan page, right? Jack Canfield fan, you know, facebook.com forward slash Jack Canfield fan. And I kept showing up and I made a habit of it. And I, I spent about 15 to 20 minutes a day following 
three, not one, not two, but three social influencers for 90 days. Someone is going to notice me. And that's what follow is. The deep roots bring big fruits. Uh, that's a lucky bamboo back there, right in back of me that you see. If you're watching the video, if you're listening or you're reading this, I have lucky bamboo as my background. And then I don't have a green screen. Behind me is, a, is an $85 Ikea mural of a bridge leading to the tree of knowledge. Anyway, that's what I call it, going through the fog. And it's, um, it's a suspension bridge. So I, I make a story out of it. And with the bamboo, it's important to know the way bamboo grows. It's usually acknowledged as the fastest growing plant on earth, but initially it develops a deep root system. Uh, some species three years, others five years, some 15 years before you don't even see a bamboo shoot come up. They call it a shoot because it shoots up so fast. And then once it shoots up and it's taken over your backyard or taken over wherever it is that um, it's been planted. If you know bamboo, you know what that's about. In fact, my friend Jack Canfield has bamboo in his backyard and they have to put special nets under the ground because bamboo just takes over the underground. It has deep foundation. And what happens in a, in a skyline like Manhattan? Deeper the foundation, the taller the building, right? So with the F of fit formula, which is follow, 90 days may seem like a long time because day after day after day for 90 days, you're saying no one is, you know, no one is noticing me or no one is commenting or, but pretty soon as you keep showing up through the principle of consistency, through the principle of reciprocity, through the principle of, of liking, through these influence principles were developed by uh, Dr. Robert Cialdini, who's a mentor of mine. I've known him for over 20 years, but through certain principles of persuasion and influence, then someone's gonna notice you. And they're gonna wonder why does this person keep showing up? And if you're consistent and if you have something intelligent to say, if you're genuinely interested in them, then they will find you interesting. Let me repeat, if you're interested in a thought leader or someone with higher status than, than you have in your industry, then they will become interested in you. Dale Carnegie first taught that nearly 100 years ago with how to win friends and influence people. So that's the F part and that's where most people fall apart. They'll quit after 10 days or 20 days. What you can do is you can put the platform of choice, let's say it's Facebook, um, you can just take from the browser, you, you can take the actual link to it. There'll be a little icon on your screen, on your desktop, that's what I do, I click it and then I look at the comments that are happening and then I want to say something intelligent, sometimes clever, something that makes me look smart, but at the same time makes the thought leader look smarter. And that's the way that you support them. It doesn't take um, fancy um, manipulative or um, influential principles to do this. It's just common sense. And if you keep showing up without buying something, now if you buy something, it's even better because you've just elevated yourself with status. So money buys speed. So if you ended up buying something from them, it could be consultation time. I mean, when I was first starting, I would buy an hour of consulting time from people I wanted to talk to. Many times they didn't even charge me. Uh, these days they, don't have, they have no problem charging me. And even if I have friends, I still pay for um, the, the masterminds that I'm attending, such as Joe Polish, He's been a friend of mine over 25 years, Genius Network, $25,000 I pay. So understand when you're following someone, if you end up paying, that accelerates the process. But 90 days without paying, I've gotten to meet thought leaders that I would have only dreamed to have met without the social networking available. This is all about networking and referrals. Step number two is invite. Now, what does that mean? Well, I believe you can get more done in a one hour interview on a Facebook Live or on a webinar or whatever other video presentation you do with them, even audio if you have a podcast. You can get more done in building rapport in one hour than you could in having five one hour meetings with them at events where you'd have to travel, live out of your suitcase and go into a hotel room. Why? Because if you do your homework and you interview them 
and ask questions that they never knew that you would be so interested in, finding some odd facts or quirks about them, then they're going to notice you and they're going to know that you care. Now, I'm sure you've heard this. No one knows how much, no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Okay, that's common. And if you haven't heard it, it's a great saying. Um, many people have been quoted that. I heard it from Christopher Morley first, but I don't know who's given credit for it. Regardless, if you engage with the leaders and invite them to an event where you're interviewing them, then it doesn't really matter how many people are viewing it. But if you invite them and they accept, and why would they accept? Because you've consistently shown that you have an interest in them. Remember, they are interested in you once they found you interesting, and they do that by you consistently showing up for them because you're earning the right to elevate yourself close to their status. Then the third step is to tell everybody. Now, why is telling important? And I put three tells on an index card that you're watching, or if you're listening, I'm holding up an index card. If you're reading, there's an index card, index card in my hands, and it says step three, tell, tell, tell. Tell your network to share the live event. The five letter word that's the most important, most powerful networking tool that you have is the share button on Facebook Live that Zuckerberg and company of Facebook has created. Actually, Randy Zuckerberg came up with Facebook Live and I got a chance to take a picture of, of, with her, with my dog, Minnie, at at an event, at a, at a Genius Network event. Now, I know that Tony Robbins often says three words, proximity is power. And it's so true. And it doesn't just need to be physical proximity. If you're in their proximity virtually and you keep showing up with your picture, this is not a teleseminar where there's no name or face attached to it. This is actually online and you're saying some intelligent things and you've shown that you've done your homework. <laughs> I cannot tell you how powerful this is if you're willing to do the work. Why do people not continue? I have no idea. People fail mostly because they don't allow momentum to kick in. Now, there's three reasons why people fail. They don't get started. They don't finish. But most, most common is they don't keep going. And therefore, why would they finish? Keeping it going is momentum. And if you don't keep it going, it's like having a retail store and putting be back after lunch day after day after day without ever coming back. So that's what it's like not showing up. So FIT stands for follow, invite, and tell, tell, tell. You wanna tell everyone in your network to share because that will put pressure on that thought leader as a stick strategy to get that relationship to stick. Now, if you know someone of equal status, then you wanna tell them as well. Because let's say I know Jack Canfield, and let's say I didn't know Ivan Meisner, who's, who has spoken for me several times at a mastermind in Austin, Texas. Now, let's say I didn't know Ivan, right? So once Ivan says yes to an interview, I go to Jack and I say, guess what? I'm having uh, an interview with Ivan Meisner. Could you reach out to him and just tell him what you know about me so that he feels comfortable and you know he knows that I'm going to make him look good and not bad? And so not only telling your colleagues and, and friends, which they typically have lower status, but if you know someone close to or above status of that person, that will cement that relationship. I never make cold calls anymore. And the, the reason why is I've utilized the FIT formula before social networking, but now you have the power within your fingertips if you're not too lazy to give it a try. Now, what are five errors, five mistakes that most entrepreneurs make with relationship capital. Now, with building your network and getting referrals to create referrals for you, having a division of referrals coming in and it's, it's kind of like a tsunami and just a flood of new customers without any acquisition costs. Well, people make mistakes and one of the mistakes they make is when they're creating partnerships with their network is they don't vet their partners. Now, what's vetting mean? Vetting just means checking them out and making sure they're the real deal. Now, just because someone has status doesn't mean they're honest. Just because someone has high status doesn't mean they pay their bills. Just because someone has high status doesn't mean they're nice. So the first thing I do is I ask people who know them, is this person a good guy? Is this person a giver? 
is this person only a taker? I don't care how high the status is. Many times if I pin my hopes, hopes on someone I wanted to meet for a long time, and then I part the curtain, I'm brutally disappointed. There's no Santa Claus and there's trouble and struggle. So very important that you vet your partners, no matter how high their status is. Number two is not following up with a seminar lead. So when you go to a seminar, or if you've met someone during a Facebook Live or a webinar and you actually had a genuine relationship, mostly at a physical event, I'd like to take off the first two days I come back and follow up with them. Now, I made a big point of um, one of my friends. He calls me his mentor, but I think he's smarter than me. His name is Joe DiMaria. He's a great curriculum builder. And uh, we talked about this when he recently came to a mastermind that I invited him uh, in Phoenix. And he actually took days off to follow up with those people. And some of them turned into clients. Why? because he created a vacuum. He created scheduling time to follow up with them. And therefore he had a chance to do what he wanted to do and not just forget about them. Because over time, if five days pass, 10 days pass, you won't follow up with them. So if you fail to follow up, you spent this time and energy, you've traveled, you've probably spent money on uh, going to a seminar. Make sure that with those prospects, that you do follow up with them, whether or not they're gonna turn into buyers. They could be reference and, and JV partners. Next, focus on, focus on episodic versus recurring profits. Now, what is this about? Well, an episodic product is a launch, right? It's an episode. A recurring product is in a membership site. So when you're creating a network and you wanna get referrals, many times, whether they're promoters, passives, or detractors, and if it seems like I'm very enthusiastic about this, I am, because this is life-changing, but it's not sexy. It's not exciting for many people because it takes time. It's a farming and not a hunting strategy. Hunting is immediate, farming takes time. So it's a farming strategy, but farming in the long run will win over and, and not only will, will it win over clients and win their hearts, but you'll also have a steady recurring income. Monthly recurring income is what you're after. Um, one of my mentors, Roland Fraser, taught me that monthly recurring income, if you have a business that creates that versus episodic income, then if someone's going to buy your company, that multiple of how much you can sell that company for because now you have a cash flow that you're selling is three to seven times more than an episodic business. So there's episodic referrals that you get, you know, one-off sales and there's, there's recurring referral sales that you get, which is going into a membership site or a monthly payment or tuition, kind of like, like um, a utility that you would pay, whether it's electricity or a car payment. Now, not connecting with top movers and shakers is intimidating for a lot of people. So they, fi they figure I'm not going to connect with them because, you know, who am I? They have imposter syndrome, right? Like, who am I to connect with the top mover and shaker? Well, in the beginning, you're not going to be addressed like a peer because you're not. That person has earned the right, whether they have an ego or don't have an ego. Typically, they do have an ego. We all do. But not addressing them or not at least reaching out to them, not having the courage and the fearlessness to do that, you never know who's gonna be the nice person to come back to you. I've been shocked by people who I thought were not nice and they were nice and I felt a sense of guilt or shame which are worthless emotions, but at the same time I, I was surprised that you know they came back to me and some of them now are my dearest friends. So go after movers and shakers, but don't overextend your bounds. Just know where you're at and see if there's a way you can intern with them for free. See if there's a way that you can add value to them. Maybe you buy something from them, you will get their attention that way. Number five is imposter syndrome takes over your mindset. Now, this is insidious. What is imposter syndrome? And imposter syndrome is not the only syndrome. There's also dinosaur syndrome which I've had. <laughs> Dinosaur syndrome is 
wow, am I relevant any longer? I knew I was a big deal. Am I a little deal now? Because I've been online since 1995 and these young, these young pups who were my students are now my teachers. They're smarter than me, I think. They're making more money than I am. That's dinosaur syndrome, okay? Now I happen to think that's worse because I've had to battle with that from time to time and I get coached and I overcome it. But imposter syndrome is not even feeling you have the right to hang out with the people who are making a difference. And that's something you got to get over. You may have that privately, but if you continue to have it, people will know you have it and they will not want to deal with you. So look up imposter syndrome on Google. It's not something that you want to live into because it will never give you a chance to become a networking king or queen. Now, here's a key point. Relationship capital is more important and more valuable than capital. In the world of networking, in the world of referrals, your relationship capital, that's your safety net. If you're a trapeze artist, the safety net is the relationship capital. It's not the money. You may miss the, the catch, right? You may miss from one bar to the next. You may miss the catcher on the other end. Not his fault or her fault and not yours. That's going for the money, but the net is the relationship capital so you can at least go back up and try again and again. I hope that analogy works for you relationship capital, if you took everything away, my database, my knowledge, if you gave me a marketing lobotomy and just allowed me to have a part of my brain to remember my relationships and they remembered me, that's all I would need to go back and get back up on my feet. And I've done that because I've had um, three big losses that I can think of and it was the relationship capital that brought me back up. Now, four options you have to connect with new networks. Not only people, networkers, but networks, okay? You have four options in connecting with networks, whether it's Business Network International, which was started by, I mentioned, Ivan Meisner, whether it's Vistage, which is um, usually uh, with CEOs or entrepreneur uh, organization, which used to be YPO. No matter what network you belong to, if you belong to a mastermind, there are four ways and four options that you have to engage and enroll, or to be commanded and controlled. Let me repeat, you have four options. You're either gonna be engaging and enrolling collaboratively or being commanded and controlled manipulatively. And you're responsible for each. So these are ways to play this game of networking. One is to refuse to play. So you just don't join. You don't wanna spend the money because you don't think it's worthwhile. Um, you don't think there's a return on investment. You don't want to buy consultation time because you think they owe you a free consultation. That's refusing to play. It's decisive. That's up to you. I hope you don't refuse to play. If you, re you refuse to play with me and you didn't pay me for a consultation, then chances are you're not going to get the attention you would get than if you did pay. Everyone's created equal, I believe, but not everyone is treated equally. People who pay more are treated differently. I believe in equality of opportunity not equality of outcome, right? It's conscious capitalism. Now, what if you pretend to play? Pretending to play is being fake. It's showing up but masquerading as if you are someone you're not. You know, the easiest way to be feeling as if you're an imposter is pretend like you are someone you're not. What if it was the first time you're ever on a stage and you said, hey, I'm nervous. It's my first time on stage. I'm hoping all of you will support me. What if you said that? You think the first thing that came out of your mouth and you said that to the audience, you don't think that they're not going to support you. They are going to support you. And that's the advice I give. There's, there's free consulting right there. If you've never spoken on stage, that's the first thing you want to say because all your fears will go away because typically you'll get a sitting ovation, sometimes a standing ovation. Playing not to lose. Okay. You can't win a game playing defense 100% of the time, whether it's soccer or American football, or basketball, hockey, whatever. Playing not to lose doesn't work. It's playing small. Um, many entrepreneurs who are women, who are part of my tribe, 65% of the people in my tribe are women. And 50% of them are outside of the United States. And about 25% don't even speak English. And they report to me. They report to me that this is their biggest challenge is they have been putting themselves number two in the passenger seat instead of in the driver's seat. So they play not to lose. 
And so you can't win by playing defense 100% of the time. Sometimes they'll overcompensate and come across too hard and in too much of a masculine way, and then they offend people. There's this happy medium. There's a harmony of playing to win. And it's having an all-in attitude. Now, the key to play to win, like you refuse to play, you pretend to play, you play not to win, and then you, uh, you play to win. You play not to lose, and you play to win. But the only type of game to play, and this is what I want you to focus on if you're networking, is you want to play a winnable game. And the fit formula is a winnable game. Is the game winnable? You cannot win the game of chess by playing with the rules of checkers. So is it winnable? Is it possible for you to win? If you play a winnable game, there's two options, my friend. You either win or you learn. And I'm a lifelong learner because I learn more often than I win. So if you want to see what this looks like and you want to really dip in to what I think the essence of networking is to get qualified referred prospects and lower the customer acquisition cost as a division of lead flow coming into your business, even if you're a startup, especially if, you're, if you have ascended to a level of prosperity that's really good, all, well, all that will happen with your company is you'll become more profitable by asking the ultimate question, which I spent at least seven minutes on. So if you're in North America, I want you to grab your mobile phone, your smartphone, and in the message area, just type in the three letters FIT, F-I-T. Just like that, uppercase, lowercase, it does not matter. And then where you put the phone number, I want you to type in 415-980-3555. Again, 415-980-3555. Make sure you don't put FIT in the same um, category of your, um, uh, in the same line as your phone number, because if you do that, then it's not going to go. And you don't have to put, uh, uh, you don't have to put quotation marks. So type in fit in the message and 415-980-3555 in the mobile. Now, if you're outside of the United States, then I want you to go to marketingonline.com forward slash fit. And this isn't fit like this. This is fit as in follow, invite, and tell. And then the relationship capital that you're going to get is going to outvalue the profits that you want to have. Because you'll lose money and you'll make money. And you can always get it back. I've done it many times. But if you lose a relationship, you may never get it back, such as a divorce or doing or saying something that you regret and that relationship doesn't come back and then you have a bunch of detractors. Now, there is something called conscious capitalism. And um, I'm, I'm very, very happy to make an announcement that you're gonna be meeting someone who not only knows all about it, but really wrote the book about it but that's another session. Right now, my name is Alex Mondosian. I hope our paths cross again soon. And every Friday, 12 noon Pacific, 3 p.m. East Coast time, join me at marketingonline.com forward slash Friday live. It's a revolving URL. I'll always see you there. And bring a friend or a study buddy. It's more fun to study and compare notes together. All good wishes.